writing and specifically grammar might just be the key to your dreams. That's a bold statement, isn't it? But in this video, I'm going to explain to you why I believe this so strongly and what exactly I mean by this. My name is Leon Larouche. I'm the author of The Architecture of Grammar and I'm also the founder of Trivium Writing. My goal is to make you the best writer you can be so that you can be successful in the things that you do. Now, this video is an introduction to the video series based on the book, The Architecture of Grammar. But before I tell you about what this video series is about, how it works, what the book is, I want to really talk to you about why I believe grammar is so important. You see, I grew up in a small town called La Baie in Quebec. Quebec is the French-speaking province in Canada. And for some obscure reason, which I still struggle to understand to this day, I felt as though my hometown, my home province, my own culture and my home, my, my mother tongue was too limiting. And I decided I would learn English and I decided I would become a writer. So I started writing in French at around age 15, but I figured, you know, if I could write in English, that would be so much better. And because I learned English as a second language, I got really good at understanding the grammar and everything that goes into making writing compelling. And what happened next is a series of events that led me to go to the places that I'd, already, that I'd always dreamed of, the, doing the things that I always wanted to do. And I can all credit that to writing. So you can see here, um, La Baie is where I grew up. Um, and there are, here are the places that I've been to afterwards. So at around 19 years old, I moved to Montreal and I took a bachelor's degree in English literature and professional writing because I wanted to solidify my English skills and I wanted to become a writer in English. During my bachelor's, I was lucky enough to go on an exchange semester in Nottingham, England. And to give you a little bit of context, why was I so keen on studying in England? Well, for one thing, England is a country of English literature, but the reason I got interested in English literature in the first place was that I was a big fan of Iron Maiden. And I'd always dreamed of seeing, you know, the, the motherland of the English language and all the history and all the, you know, the cultural context. So I was very keen on going to England and to me going to Nottingham in England was a dream come true. And here's the other thing too, as I grew up, I became obsessed as a lot of people outside the US, I became obsessed with the United States of America. And I, I started watching American movies. I, I listened to a lot of American music and I was just fascinated by the land of opportunities. And so I had made it my goal to move come whatever may to the United States, whether on a work visa, whether on a student visa, I figured, and this was my goal, I wanted to learn English so well, I wanted to write so well, that I figured, you know, if I do everything right, if I become skilled at that one thing, you know, they will let me in the United States. And the reality is, you know, they don't let anybody. So I figured I have to get really good, I have to get really skilled. And so after my bachelor's degree, I was able to move to Williamsport, uh, Williamsport, Pennsylvania in the US on a Fulbright Fellowship. And so this was an incredible opportunity because I was teaching my mother tongue, which is French, at a small private liberal arts college. And the thing is, we don't have these small private liberal arts college in Canada. And so these were the kinds of institutions where I always dreamed of studying. And, you know, if I, if I had had the money, I would have taken my bachelor's degree in the United States just because I was so fascinated with the country and, you know, the education system, etc. cetera. Um, and so I was essentially given this second chance to study in the U.S. and I was teaching and I was auditing courses and uh, it was just a fantastic experience. Then I moved to Toronto, Ontario with a interlude going back to La Baie, Quebec uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, went back to my parents, I started my business, Trivium Writing. And then when things started taking off with Trivium Writing, I moved to Toronto, Ontario, which is where I am today. 
Now, why am I talking about all of this? Why am I telling you about the places that I've been? Well, the reality is for somebody who comes from La Baie, Quebec, the things that I've done are highly unusual. I've had successes and I've had opportunities that kids from my hometown don't typically have. And the reality is I've gained these opportunities. I've achieved my wildest dream because of writing and because of grammar. And I was lucky enough to come from a background that valued writing, that valued academics and that valued, you know, um, clear communication. And so that helped me tremendously all the way through high school, through college, to university. And, you know, even after, you know, in my professional, in my professional career, um, between the time that I graduated uh, from Concordia University, and the time that I went to Williamsport, Pennsylvania, I was actually offered my first job out of university, I didn't have to apply for it because the company had found me on LinkedIn and they really loved, you know, my presentation on LinkedIn. They really loved the writing that I was putting out. And so I was interviewed and I got the job really easily all because of writing and all because of grammar. So I wrote this book, The Architecture of Grammar, because I want everybody to be a good writer. I want everybody to master grammar. And the reality is, Grammar is a real world scale because it opens up a world of opportunities. I can guarantee you, no matter who you are, if you master writing, if you have good grammar, you will be golden. It doesn't matter if you're someone who doesn't have a job right now, who has, you know, dim job prospects, or if you're the CEO of a multinational corporation, you can use writing. Writing can make you more successful. And the biggest component of writing, the first and foremost component of writing is grammar. This book, The Architecture of Grammar, is the first in a series of three books called The Architecture of Writing. The Architecture of Writing is based on the trivium writing premise. And the word trivium, trivium is a Latin word, but the concept was created by the Greeks. It means three. And these are the three lower liberal arts, grammar, logic, and rhetoric. So this book, The Architecture of Grammar, is the first in three books. The second book is going to be The Architecture of Logic. And the third book is going to be The Architecture of Rhetoric. There might be additional books as well on writing-related topics. But for now, these are the three books that are in the works. And this book has just been released, The Architecture of Grammar. And in fact, I must acknowledge that I was commissioned by a private college in the Philippines called Green Valley College to write this book. So they pre-ordered a number of books. And so that allowed me to take the time off my business to write this book and provide it for them and provide it to the rest of the world as well. So this book is called The Architecture of Grammar, 30 Short Lessons to Think About a Penthouse and to improve your writing through grammar. Now, you may be wondering, what does anything have to do with the penthouse? Well, you'll see in the book, the examples that I use are about buying a penthouse, and it is a silly example. But the whole premise for this book is that writing, and specifically grammar, will help you achieve your wildest dreams. And the dream that I used as an example for all of the lessons is me buying a penthouse. Now you might think that's silly and it's specifically a penthouse in New York City. Of course, someday I would love to buy a penthouse in New York City. It's just one example. But the book asks you to pick one of your dreams, something from your bucket list and to use it to write sentences to practice what you're learning in these 30 lessons. The 30 lessons go from the most general to the most specific. Well, not the, not the most general to the most specific, but from the simplest to the most complicated. And by simplest and most complicated, I mean we're starting from the very first thing you need. We're starting from zero. So it does not matter how much knowledge of grammar you have, you are going to learn the foundations. You are going to learn all of the things that you need. And so by starting at lesson one, you're going to understand everything else. So we've got lesson one, 
And in lesson two builds on top of lesson one. It uses what you've learned in lesson one. Then lesson three uses lesson one and lesson two. Lesson four uses lesson one, two, and three, and so on and so forth. And that's why the methodology is called the architecture of grammar. And that's why the methodology, the overarching methodology is called the architecture of writing. Because writing at the end of the day and grammar is, you know, architecture. We're putting blocks together in order to create meaning. And by doing that in different contexts, for different purposes, for different audiences, we are able to achieve our wildest dreams. We are able to get the job that we want, get the business opportunities we desire, you know, communicate clearly in our relationships. There's so many things we can do with writing. I just can't overemphasize this notion. And so the problem though, is that in our society, especially since the past 50 years, we've put less emphasis on writing and there are even people that are trying to lower the standard and we shouldn't be lowering the standard. We should be making the standard more widely available. And that's why we've created a trivium writing, the trivium writing standard, but that's, you know, another conversation. Now, my goal with the architecture of grammar is for you to understand in the simplest terms, everything that you need in the grammar, but I have not dumbed down the notions, you know, I have, provided general language to understand the notions, but you're still going to learn the grammatical terms because the grammatical terms are absolutely critical in understanding grammar and in using grammar as a, as a tool for being a better communicator. And so the thing that I often see, especially in the education system, a lot of people treat writing as an end in and of itself. Writing is a, not an end in and of itself. It is a means to other ends. And whatever your dream might be, you can use writing, you can become a good writer in order to achieve these things. I think of writing and grammar as the oil you put in the fire of your dreams. It's oil that you put in the fire of your dreams and you use it as a tool in your arsenal. It's not the only tool, but it's a very important one. And in addition to this, there are so many contexts in which we need to write already. We need to write already emails. We need to write all kinds of things, memos, reports, you know, there's so much stuff that we need to write. So we need to be able to do that most effectively. But if you can add in other areas of your life, writing, and especially if you can think like a writer in your different ways of communicating, you are going to be more clear, you are going to be more compelling. And as a result of this, you're going to be more persuasive, you're going to exert more influence, you will have more power, more status, and ultimately more money. There will never be a shortage of there will never will will never not need writers and will never not need people that can communicate clearly. So if you can put that skill in your arsenal, then you will be golden. So this is my message to you. Writing matters, grammar matters. It will help you achieve your dreams. Now, this video series goes over the 30 lessons in the architecture of grammar. So the goal for this series is to complement the book. If you have the book, you can use these videos as you know a different way to learn. And you, know, you can read the, the lessons and then watch the videos. However, the videos are not as detailed and thorough as the lessons. So perhaps you're finding this online and you don't have the book yet. I highly recommend that you get your copy of the Architecture of Grammar because the explanations are much more detailed, much more thorough. You have the examples, you have the exercises. And so it's just, it's great practice. But if anything, I hope that these videos give you a great introduction to the most important grammar lessons and that you can use that to be a better writer and to be a better communicator. So in the next videos in this series, we're going to go over all these different lessons and all these different concepts from the architecture of writing methodology. And we're going to be applying this to grammar and we're going to be applying this to 
whatever it is that you want to achieve through writing. So I'm super excited that you're here and I can't wait for you to start using writing as a way to achieving your goals. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.